In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the grace of the gates of eternity, Grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand, or, hand over an accused person before he had faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died and who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has put our trans transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, 
Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to, that, said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Do you know, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you. When you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. And when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying but what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Beautiful conversation that Jesus is having here with Peter. I want to look at this last line, that it, this interesting line of Jesus foretelling the kind of death that Peter will have, that he will dress himself, and go, that he used to dress himself and go where he wanted when he was younger. But when he is old, he will stretch out his hands and someone else will dress him and lead him where he does not want to go. Of course, Peter died by, by martyrdom, of course, willingly professing the faith and really willingly laying down his life for, for the faith. He was crucified in Rome. He asked to be crucified upside down so that, because he didn't feel worthy to be, to be crucified in the same way as, as Jesus. There, in a way, you know, it, it certainly is fulfilling what Jesus said. He's, his life is being asked from him, in a way being taken from him. Yet there's this, other, there's this other aspect, too, of his giving in to the grace of the Holy Spirit and really following the Lord. So that's, that's Jesus' last command, follow me. And, he, and that's exactly what he did. So his life was taken from him, but he also followed the Lord, listening to the grace of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit always invites us to follow the Lord more closely. One of the things that really struck me about this line of Jesus' prophecy over Peter is that it could be said of all of us or any of us, no, you know, even if we're not going to be martyred. You know, when we are younger, we did, we did what we want, but as we grow older, we become more beholden to others. And of course, even as, as we get older, as we lose our own capacity, others dress us, and we go where we don't want to go. It's, it's beautiful even to see that aspect of our life so deeply tied even to the mission of Peter and to what, what, and to what Jesus is asking of us, that as our life in this world, all of us, our life will be taken from us in some way. But yet the invitation here is, it can be right with Peter to follow the Lord, being willing, handing over our life for him. And if we listen deeply, that's the grace of the Holy Spirit working in us. It's a difficult call. It's a call that we all have to, to move toward. But it's the grace of the Holy Spirit to follow the Lord more deeply as our life is being asked of us in whatever way it is for each of us individually. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. <clears throat> for those who are going to be ordained not this Saturday but next Saturday for our, in our archdiocese may the Holy Spirit abundantly bless their ministry we pray to the Lord for national leaders may the goodness of God guide them in their policy making and decisions we pray to the Lord for all the imprisoned, may God move the hearts of the guilty to repentance and console the wrongly convicted with strength and grace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for peace and justice in our cities and an end to all violence. We pray to the Lord. For, all of the, for our community of faith, may God's grace at work in our lives allow us to bear fruit for the kingdom. 
we pray to the Lord. For all of those who have died, especially for John G. Hubble, for whom this Mass is being offered. May the angels welcome them to paradise. We pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, we ask you to look kindly upon these petitions, which we offer in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Your spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.